This is our theme song for our revival meeting. Revive us again. 300 and, uh, what did I say? 300 and what? 356. Okay, good. All right, 356. We're singing together. Stand to your feet and we'll sing Revive us again. 356. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now grown above. Hallelujah, light the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, light the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Spirit.
I didn't check this gift to see what was included or not. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's good to be with you. Uh, Brother Jim, he called me this morning. And I don't know if I come out and sing a few songs. And I didn't have any place to go, so this is good. Uh, I'm right at home anyway. <coughs>
played this guitar down for several years and sang the quartets and trios. And, uh, but lately I picked it up and started playing a little bit. If this world brought you with hope of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with bigger fare, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Says, I've got an older song that I like to sing. If you want to sing along with me, just do that too. Love once gone, 
anything in particular picked out, but I was looking at this track that I've got in front of me. And it was, I want to stroll over heaven with you. That kind of stuck out to me. Uh, it's an old song everybody knows, but maybe you've got someone that's going on ahead and you'd like to stroll over heaven with thee. I know I've got a mom and dad that took me to church all my life. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. I'm, I know that they're looking down on us, you know. Right? Looking down and I'm glad that I'm still serving the Lord and still doing what, what is right. As I sing this, you think about maybe someone that you'd like to stroll over heaven with.
And you know that's going to save us. That's going to take us soon to the end, isn't it? Just like it did the children of Israel that day back in with all those plagues were coming, up, coming upon them. God protected them. But they had to get that little lamb ready without spot and without blemish, just like Jesus was when he hung on the cross. Without spot and without blemish. A perfect person that we, we could never be perfect, but Christ was perfect. And he went to the cross and died for me and for you. Listen to these words and I hope that it does for you what it does for me. It makes me think of what Jesus did on the cross for me.
and standing for what we believe and stand for. And I thank you for his faith. I thank you, Lord, for this church and what they've been taught. I thank you for these people that have come faithfully every night. And now for our brother that's come tonight to sing to us. Oh, how he's lifted our hearts. How he's encouraged us along the way. And so I pray now that you'll just be with us the next few minutes and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, thank you. Be seated. Go home to thy friends and tell them. Now here's a, a marvelous story. This is the story of what we call the Gadarene demoniac. And the reason he's called that is because he was from the place called Gadarene, and he's possessed with demons. He's possessed with many demons. I mean, so many that they're named E Legion. And he's had them. He's had them for a long time, for weeks, for months, perhaps even years. And may I say to all of you here tonight, there is absolutely no words to describe to you how this man must have looked. And the Bible says he was naked. A naked man is not a beautiful thing. I don't care what, uh, you know, anybody would look and say, a, a naked man, a naked person. Uh, and, and he wore no clothes, the Bible said. He was destitute. His, his mind was possessed. He lived among the tombs, out in the cemetery. That's where he lived. This is where this naked man made his home. Uh, and, of course, night and day, the Bible said, you could hear him crying. I mean, like a wolf howling out in the woods. Uh, you could hear this man as he howled and as he screamed and as he cried out for help and as he cried for mercy. And those demons within him had possessed him and had him in such a destitute way. And, of course, you can imagine what he looked like. His hair. His hair, it must have been long and stringy and not been washed. And, and his face with his beard and, and, and his eyes. Uh, as he's possessed with these demons and, and, and his naked body. I mean, there's no way you can describe how horrible, how awful this man must have looked. Those around him did their best to help him. They even chained him. They chained him to a rock and tried to keep him calm down. But at night, the power in him was so strong that he would break the chains from off of him. He'd run and scream, and he'd cut himself. And cried, and, and they, there was no way, no man could tame him, the Bible said. He's, he's so possessed with these demons. What an awful sight. One day, he looked out across that little sea, and he saw a little boat coming. And I want to tell all of you here tonight, in that boat was a man. The creator of the universe was in that boat. In that boat was a man who had power over all flesh. And in that boat was a man who had power over all demons and the devil himself. When that boat came into shore and off stepped the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, this man, this man, horrible as he must have looked, no clothes, his face uh, 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 with all of his beard and his eyes beaming, streaming, staring, and his weeping and wailing, he ran. And he dropped his knees in front of the Lord Jesus. And he began to cry out and have mercy upon me. The demons within him realized that this was Jesus. And they realized that he was getting ready to do something with him. And uh, they realized that Jesus had power over them. And so they, the, the, the demons within this man began to cry out and say, Please, uh, 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 don't send us away. Uh, don't send us far away. And then, I don't know how this must have been. But there was a herd of swine upon this hillside. And so these demons within this man, using his voice box, said, send us to the swine. Jesus said, all right. All right, then all of you just leave and you go to the swine. And remember what happened? Remember that sight? I mean, uh, wouldn't it have been something if we could have televised that? If we could have put that on YouTube? What happened now? Those demons went inside those, uh, those uh, 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 pigs, those hogs. You ever been around a hog lot? That's the stinkingest, dirtiest smell you could ever smell in your whole life is a hog. There's 2,000 hogs up here on this hillside. Can you imagine what that must have smelled like? Along with this demon-possessed man in the tomb screaming and yelling and all that went on. And y'all, uh, here is these demons. Now, they said, send it to the swine. 
The Lord said, okay, send them this way. And when they, began, when they possessed those hearts, all of a sudden those hawks came running down that hillside. And here's the scene where Jesus has just come in. And they ran down the hillside. And they ran out into the ocean. And they drowned. What was it they did? They committed hawkicide, didn't they? Yeah, that's what they did. They committed hawkicide. They killed themselves right there. And, 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 uh, and Jesus, of course, now has cast them. Well, these people standing around. I mean, they, it, 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 how many people do you think it would take to take care of 2,000 hogs? There's a lot of people around. I mean, there's several people looking on, and, and man, they couldn't believe their eyes. They couldn't believe what they had just seen. And so these people all went running back into town. And they said that they began to publish out all over, all over town. They said, you ain't going to believe what just happened. Yeah, I, I, there's no way to describe They said, what took place? These 2,000 hogs went running down the hill and committed uh, suicide right there in the ocean. And the Bible said the whole city came out to see what had taken place. And when they got there, they saw the shock of their life. Why, this wild man, this, this, this unhuman being like thing, with no clothes and everything, why, he's seated at the feet of Jesus. And he's got a big smile on his face. This man has a smile in years. He's got a big smile on his face. His hair has been cut. He's got clothes on. And he's seated there. And you know, I, I, I can just picture Jesus. He was such a loving man. Don't you reckon as he sat there in his feet that Jesus sort of had his arm around this fellow? And they were just talking away, just rejoicing. How, can you see that scene? Can you imagine that? Don't you think that's what happened? And these people come up. They could not believe their well, Jesus, of course, that's the reason he came to that shore. That's the reason he'd come there was to uh, take care of this man. And so now he's ready to leave. He didn't stay very long, just a little while. So he's ready to leave. And, and oh, this man, this possessed, demon-possessed man who's had this big change to take care of his life, he said, oh, I'm going with you. You know what I found out a long time ago, preacher? When you get saved, you know what you want? You want to be with Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, that's where you want to be. You don't have to be begged to come to church. You don't have to be begged to be baptized. You don't have to be begged to join the church. You don't have to be begged to read your Bible. You don't have to be begged to be a person. If you're saved, you want to be where Jesus is. He said, I want to go with you. Can I go with you? And Jesus said, oh, oh, I've got something bigger for you to do. i got a bigger job. Oh, Lord, what? You go back home. I don't know if this man had a wife. He may have. I don't know if he had a family. Everybody knew him, of course. You know, he'd been a, uh, he'd been a torment to that old town for, uh, for so long. And everybody knew him. And he said, you go back to them. And you tell them what great things Jesus has done for you. Man, what a message, don't you think? You could preach this sermon tonight, couldn't you? I mean, that's a message for all of us through this evening. That's what the Lord wants you and me to do. See, we weren't quite in, in the same condition that this man, but we were in that condition. We were sinners. We were on our way to hell. Uh, we were possessed and influenced by the devil himself. So Jesus came into our heart and saved our soul. You know what? I've been trying to tell it for 52 years, 53, all over this country. That your preacher said last night, you said you had been preaching now how many years? 51. 51 years. The last night was his first sermon, 51 years ago. Preached that sermon. He's been doing like me. He's been doing his best to go and tell your friends and tell those around you what great things the Lord has done for thee. Let's just think a few things, and I won't be long. What should we do? Go home and tell our friends and tell them what? Tell them he's released us from the pit of sin. Jesus has released us. He brought me up, the psalmist said in Psalm 40 and verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the fiery clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established my goal. Brother, we were in a dung pit when we were lost. A smelly, stinky, dirty, filthy, worse than a hot pen. And, and that's where we were. We were desperately in prison. I mean, uh, no way to get out. You might as well try to tear the sun out of the sky as to get out of that pit that you were in. You might as well try to beat the Niagara River back with a feather as to get out of that awful pit of sin we were in. There's no way out. We were in a dangerous position. Like quicksand, we were sinking deeper and deeper and deeper. And 
more we tried to get out, the deeper we went into that awful pattern. But then, what happened? What took place? Oh, the Lord rolled up his sleep one day, and he reached down in that mire pit of sin and clay that I was in, and he's lifted me up. And he set my feet upon a solid rock. He wiped the slime off of me. The blood was applied uh, to my sins. Uh, he's established my going. He's put a new song in my lips. Uh, he's changed my life just like he did this horrible creature that was possessed for those days. In a month, <coughs> April 20th, 1949, Jesus came into my heart and saved my soul. I tell everybody, wherever I go, you need a place. A place where you can go back to, maybe not be the date like I give you mine, April 20th, 1949. But you need a place right now where you can go back to and say, there, Jesus saved my soul. There, he washed away my sins, gave me a home in heaven. I was talking to these three young men tonight, and all three of them told me exactly where they were. The exact spot where they were when Jesus came into their heart. And save their soul. You need that. See, that's being born again. Right there is when you trust Christ as your Savior. You need a place where you can go to and say to the Satan and to the devil and all doubts when they come. Get thee behind me, Satan. Right there, I trust the Lord as my Savior. He came into my heart. He washed my sins away. I'm on my way to heaven. And so go home, tell thy friends he's released us from the pit of sin. Number two, go home and tell thy friends uh, that he's delivered us uh, and removed us from darkness. We've been removed from darkness, giving, you know what the Bible says? In Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, it says, giving thanks unto the Father. By the way, how long has it been since you gave thanks to the Lord for saving your soul? Giving thanks unto the Father. Man, I thank the Lord a hundred times a day for saving me. Sometimes more, don't you? I just, every time I turn, I thank the Lord for saving me. Thank the Lord I'm not going to hell. Thank the Lord I'm on my way to heaven tonight. Isn't that the most wonderful thing? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I, I know that. I, I, I know that, that when I get down to the last thing I know, I want to know I'm saved. My aunt, she's 92 years old. She's in a Lexington nursing home. I stop and see her every time I go through Lexington, which is quite often. Every time I go in and I sit down and I start talking to her, she said, always says, Butch, that's my nickname. She says, Butch, I want to tell you one thing. I don't know my name. I don't know where I am. I don't know anything about my life. But she said one thing I know. I said, what's that name, Lily? She said, I know I'm saved. And I know heaven over me led me to the Lord and told me how to be saved. Oh, what said, oh Lord, when I get to that place, that's the last thing I know I want to know I'm Hey. Money can't buy that. No amount, no amount of money, no amount of pleasure, no amount of anything this world has to offer can buy that peace. Oh, how wonderful it is. Hey, go home and tell thy friends about that. I'll tell you something else. Uh, go home and tell thy friends not only how we've been delivered and removed from the darkness, yes, but go home and tell thy friends how we have been restored. He's restored us from pollution. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers. By the way, that's saying a mouthful right there. With the president all the way down, giving permission to all of this feminine stuff, all of this uh, effeminate, notice what the Bible says very clearly. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, which means what we're talking about tonight in, in these restrooms and all of that's going on. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Pretty clear, isn't it? Get this. This is what Paul said. And, we're, and such were some of you. Did you get that, preacher? And such were some of you. Yeah, yeah. Such were some of you. But you know what he said? But you've been washed. 
but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, I've been washed in the river. No. In the pond. No. In the baptistry. No. I've been washed in the blood. Amen. Oh, thank you for singing that song. Amen. I've been washed in the blood. It's the blood that saves you, friend. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not what I do. It's not what you do. It's what Jesus did on that cross. Amen. Amen. I've been washed in the blood. Man, I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he said, rain can't wash it away. And, and the storms can't beat it away. Oh, we ought to all shout tonight. Thank God. Man, we're securing the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been sanctified. Huh? What does that mean? That means we've just been set apart uh, to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been growing now for uh, 67 years. I've been a Christian. I've been growing, and I still ain't grown yet, man. I'm still learning something every day. I'm still learning about the Lord. I'm still learning how Jesus loves me, how he died for me, and how he's got a home in heaven waiting for me. We've been justified. We've been washed. We've been sanctified. We've been justified. What does that mean? Well, uh, well, as one of our professors said at college, justification means it means just as if you'd never sinned. Amen. That's what justification does to you. When you get saved and that blood of Jesus Christ is applied to your life, it means you're just as if you had never committed one sin. As far as God is concerned. Now, as far as you and me are concerned, we know that we're sinners. That's all we are. But when God looks upon us, he doesn't see our sins. What does he see? The blood. He sees the blood. And he, that old song we sing, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Isn't that good? Oh, friend, listen. What was it? Go home. Tell thy friends. It, what was it that saved you and me? It was the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? Oh, it's the death. It's the burial. It's the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. All oh, the power in the gospel. You know what the Lord says? All we got to do with that gospel is just throw it out. Just throw it out. Throw out the light now. Throw out the light now. Someone is sinking. It says, throw it out. Throw out the gospel. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power. It's the power of God into salvation. What does that word power mean? Hey, Greek scholar back there, the fellow, he knows Greek alphabet. Spit it out. This red-headed boy back here knows the Greek alphabet. He spit it out to me. You know what that word in the uh, Greek means that word. I am not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power. That word power, you know what I mean? It's a carryover from the word dynamite. That's exactly what the gospel uh, uh, power means. That the gospel is like a stick of dynamite. It's like a stick of dynamite. All you got to do is light it. I wish I could find a stick around here. I'd, I'd, I'd set it up. And see, you know, a lot of preachers keep a, a stick of dynamite in their pulpit just in case they have to. Set it off, you know, things go bad. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised this preacher's like, oh yeah, look at this. Look what he's got. Y'all didn't know he had this hit in that book, did you? <laughs> yeah, he's got a stick of dynamite right, right in there. Yeah, what do you mean you didn't know what He's trying to let us like he didn't know it was in there now. Anybody got a match? <laughs> we'll just light this dude off and throw it out. That's what you do with the gospel. See, that's what I do with the gospel track. You just throw it out. You throw out the gospel. Give it in the gas station. Give it in the grocery store. I don't know man, how many people I've given out a track to today here in this town. You just throw it out. Throw out the gospel. Throw it out. Oh, it's powerful. Throw it out. It'll go, whoo! And it'll blow that sin right out of your life. Amen. Like that old Catherine demoniac, man. He got, he got a taste of the gospel. Jesus Christ. And it, it, the Bible said he was clothed. He was in his right mind. And he was seated at the feet of Jesus. Won't that do it? Hey, you know what? You know what the gospel can do? You know what the gospel can do? It can blow beer cans right out of a refrigerator. <laughs> do you know that? Yeah. Do you know what the gospel can do? Yeah. It can blow cigarettes right off the end of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's powerful. You know what it can do? It can blow drugs right out of your life. Amen. It can blow, blow, blow dirty talk right off the end of your tongue. Ask the Gatherine demoniac. He'll tell you. Ask me. I'll tell you. Ask anybody here tonight that's been saved by the grace of God. They'll tell you. It's the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. Hey, the 
by the way, the preachers stick a dynamite, you know what it is? Hillbilly fishing rod. <laughs> you know what a hillbilly fishing rod is, honey? Huh? <laughs> All right. I don't have to explain that then, do I? <laughs> All right. I'm just telling you, go on, tell thy friends. Tell them you've been restored from that pollution. Amen. And then go home and tell your friends something else. Go home and tell thy friends that you he rescued us from God's wrath. Oh, here's the good part of this sermon. I'm going to be done. The good part is, that listen to this passage of Scripture. John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son. This is how simple salvation is. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Period. You don't have to add to that. You don't have to take it away. You believe that Jesus died for you, was buried, rose again, half. Period. You got it, man. That's all you have. It's Jesus Christ. You got eternal life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You know, hell's a real place. It burns with fire. Suffering is eternal. Hell lasts forever. You see, I believe in life. In fact, I believe everything in this book. I believe it from cover to cover and lid to lid, as we say down in Gold Bug. Brother, this is God's Word, amen. amen. It's the Bible, the blessed book. And brother, when the Bible talks about a heaven uh, that's waiting for all the saints, it also talks of a hell that's waiting for everyone who dies without Jesus Christ as their sin. They'll spend eternity. I care not who you are. I care not if you reach the end of accountability and you die without Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you'll spend eternity in that awful place. Sorrow is endless. The sorrow in hell, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth forever. Oh, oh, don't you weep. There's nothing funny about hell. There's no jokes. <laughs> when I think of people dying all around this town here, when I think about people who died without Jesus Christ, I said, right this moment, they're in that lake of fire, and they'll be there forever and forever. Oh, don't that move you tonight, church? Don't you close these doors. Don't you let these people come in here and change your doctrine and change your belief and change your stand that you take, brother. I mean, if you're the last one, brother, stand and stand for God. Amen. 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 Praise God, we believe. Therefore, we've escaped the wrath of God. Last of all, go home, tell thy friends. He's redeemed us from death. Oh, death. I'm like the old black fellow said, if I knew where I was going to die, I'd never go near the place. Amen. <laughs> I wouldn't go near that place tonight if I knew where the place was. Death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Boy, we start talking about death. None of us here really, we, we, we're not volunteering for the next group, are we? I mean, I'm not anxious to die. I, I, I want to live as long as I can. That's the reason I try to exercise. I try to do everything I can so I can live as long as I can and serve God and be a witness and tell people about Jesus Christ and tell them how to go to heaven and live for the Lord. Oh, the death which we shall not face. You don't have to worry, Christian. You don't have to worry about death. What was it David said? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. For a Christian, death is a shadow. As a shadow of a gun can't kill you. As a shadow of a truck can't run over you. As a shadow of a knife can't stab you. That's how death is to a Christian. Brother, you don't have to worry about death. Notice 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. It's swallowed up, brother. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, great, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is a law. Get this. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death has lost its stinger. Death has lost its strength. Death has been satisfied. It's victory in Jesus Christ, as me and the boy saying here a few minutes ago. You don't have to think worry about your saved tonight. I know we dread it. I know we worry about it. I know we're concerned. You're like me. You want to live as long as you can. But when death comes, you don't have to think worry about it. You know, uh, the, those young people, what was in this past year, out there in Oregon, in the school, when that maniac came in there with a gun and lined those young people up against the wall. Remember that? And as he went down the line, he had a big uh, automatic uh, gun. And he asked the first, are you a Christian? She said, yes. <laughs> he blew their head. Next, are you a Christian? He said, no. He shot him in the leg. 
You a Christian? No. Shot him in the leg. Came to the next. Are you a Christian? Yes. Boom. You looked at him. You know, uh, I, I, I've talked several times. Wonder, wonder what I would have said if he'd had me lined up against that wall. And he'd asked me, are you a Christian? I wonder what I'd have said. I hope I would have said, yes, sir, I am. Blow me head. Shoot me right there if you want to. I hope I'd have said that. But I don't know. You know, it takes the grace of God to do anything, doesn't it, brothers? Don't you go around bragging and say, I'd never do that or I'd never be involved in that. Brother, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you and me wouldn't be here tonight, would we? Amen. I don't know, but I'll tell you what happened. I can tell you exactly what happened. Those people that were Christians, before he ever pulled that trigger, they was already in heaven. And death doesn't have any, any power over us. The Lord said, I've taken care of death for you. That's, the, that's part of salvation. That's part of the package deal we get when you trust the Lord as your Savior. You don't have to worry about death. You don't have to worry about the sting, the awfulness, the horrible. You know, uh, I told you uh, uh, last Saturday about that truck uh, running head into the family that was a member of our church and killed four of them right on the spot. What a horrible, awful thought is that big truck wham without any brakes hitting them head on. But you know what? There's already in glory. Before that truck ever been a metal. See, that's the Lord. He takes care of us. If you're saved, man, that's wonderful. That's the key I'm telling you. Go home and tell thy friends. Why would we want to tell what all of this wonderful things the Lord has done for us? Isn't it great to be saved tonight? Isn't it great to know the Lord as your Savior? Oh, friends, I close with saying this. Listen to me. Go home tonight. Before you lay your head on your pillow, just get out by your bedside. Thank the Lord for what we have. Jesus Christ tonight. Man, it's wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's the reason I want to live for him. I want to serve him, don't you? I want to tell everybody I can. But little time, and thank you all for putting this out on YouTube. Thank you all for spending time and putting this where people can look at it. I want everybody to know that Jesus died for sinners. He'll save you if you trust him. Come to Jesus right now. On your, on your face, bow before him and trust him and him alone to save you. Not your baptism, not your good works, not your church membership. Trusting Christ as your Savior. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to have an invitation hymn. We're going to sing a song here tonight, just as I am, without complete, but that thy blood was shed for me. But before we sing, with our heads bowed, we're going to pray. Our eyes are closed. As we think about our salvation, as we think about this gathering of all he and what a wonderful thing the Lord did for that man, that maniac that he was, changed his whole life completely. He was never the same anymore. Friend, that's exactly what could happen to you tonight. You may be here, you're not saved, or perhaps you've got doubts in your mind. You don't know for sure whether you're saved or not. I, I plead with you, I urge you right here tonight, Make your calling and election sure. Make sure you're saved. Don't you take a chance on eternity. We already know that life is very short at the length. It's short. You don't know the promise of the next breath. And so right now, right where you stand, take your place as a sinner. Turn from your sins. Put your trust in Christ and believe in him and him alone and he'll save you. And he'll save you now. As a Christian, follow him. Follow him. Maybe you need to come and unite with this church and follow the Lord in baptism. Oh, that's the next thing after salvation. That's the very next thing you want to do. You want to present and let uh, a church uh, has authority from heaven to baptize you. And you become a member of that local church. And, and you can serve the Lord in and through that church like the Bible teaches. Oh, that's what you need to do. Don't hesitate tonight. You do what the Lord needs. Maybe you need to come. Join the church members. Move your membership. Or maybe you need to come tonight. Just as uh, our brother said a while ago, when you come to this altar. Take your burdens to the Lord. Leave them there. Whatever God speaks, would you do that? Father in heaven, your will be done here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're singing 282, just as I am, without one plea. Pastors here at the front, on the very first verse, God speaks to you tonight. You come while we sing. Will you? Just as I am,
service tonight. We appreciate Brother Ken Ward coming yes. and uh, singing for us and uh, the uh, Backwoods uh, boys. Uh, I'm just, I want you to know, I'm just tickled to death with the progress I'm seeing in two days with those guys. And I want you to know, I am well pleased. I don't like to say I'm proud, but I sure am well pleased. Yes. Yes. Service is here tomorrow. Yep. And unless God change their mind, it'll be the last service will be in the morning. And uh, but Bob will be preaching, and then he'll be leaving here, going back uh, to his home. All right, all hearts and minds.